This will be the 15th Sir Neville Mott lecture, the first having been given by Sir Neville himself in 1995, and the list of previous speakers reads like a veritable who's who of physics. Today's speaker, Professor Brian Josephson, will be the fifth Nobel laureate to have delivered a lecture in this series. Professor Josephson was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1973 for his work on coupled superconductors, which he did as a graduate student in the early 1960s. For most of his career, however, he has focused on the role of the mind in a range of contexts such as quantum reality, paranormal phenomena, and music. He's currently head of the Mind Matter Unification Project in the Condensed Matter Research Group at the University of Cambridge. It gives me enormous pleasure to invite Professor Josephson to deliver the 15th semester lecture, Which Way for Physics? Oh, thank you very much. Um, I should say that I know Professor Mott quite well as he was at the Cavendish for many years. In fact, he was head of a department while I was um, doing part two physics. But of course, um, undergraduates don't really know about things like heads of departments. What I want to talk about, uh, well, it's both a new and an old development. It's something which may well revolutionize physics just as quantum physics does. Um, what is a whole? Well, it, it means that somehow uh, the parts of a system all work together collectively. Our usual approach in physics is to divide a system up into parts, say a set of particles, and have them interact. And you sort of lose the wholeness, and there are lots of cases where the wholeness seems to be important. It indeed was a great and very insightful lecture. So most important here, here the idea of emergency. Many agents uh, form strong coupling, and finally they create interactions and create life. I would like to invite you to join me to thank Professor Brian Josephson for this very insightful lecture. Thank you very much. privilege for me, of course, to be sitting between two <laughs> Nobel laureates. <laughs> uh, it, it's amazing what you actually discover o over dinner. I, I discovered that, that Sir Peter was actually our fifth Mott lecturer, and third. And, and, and he was very kind to say that he, he saw it as an important precursor to his Nobel Prize, which he I found myself sitting between Gellman and Feynman. <laughs> <laughs> now, on our website, we've actually got as a research interest field the study of Josephson physics, which really, really humbles me as an engineer still struggling to apply uh, Newton's laws. A <laughs> uh, uh, final thanks, I think, to the science faculty for supporting the series and, 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 and Chris and Dean and, and, and the introduction and everything going on, and Theo and, and our physics colleagues, uh, of course, for for keeping this going from strength to strength. I mean, we did a lot of the stuff on, a lot of thinking about the nature of life, but... His uh, view of physics was uh, illuminated very much by biology. Uh, once you have a theory of how it works, then you could follow them step by step. And um, once, once you know the answer, you, you can you say know, it follows. But if you know the answer, why do you need the derivation? It's a matter of information to specify your answer. You know, uh, Richard, the complex system is a, sim is a system which takes longer time to uh, simulate than to observe. <laughs> they say that uh, it's a tradition that every six billion years physicists somewhere 
turn all the light on. Now that nothing will be interesting as well, but <laughs> more embarrassing. Clarity is one of the forms of complete fog. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. It was a great pleasure to, to see all of you and uh, have a lovely discussion about science. Yes, sorry. Do you have prediction for the